Uh, hi, everyone had a good lunch? Great. Uh, so our next speaker comes to us bearing the wounds of his battle with the Bulgarian education system. Uh, you might know him as, as this big figure in Bulgarian education. Uh, but today he's come here to tell us about his latest escapades in cryptocurrency. So please welcome Svetlin Nakov. Am I muted? Hur? Ah, it was in English. Untranslatable. So, hello everyone. Today, today I will talk about crypto wallets and, and some crypto standards behind. I will explain about the key stores, the HD wallets with hierarch hierarchical key derivation, some technical standards like BIP 39, 32, 44, the mnemonics which encode the entropy in the wallets, and some examples in JavaScript. It's a mix, and you have a practical session built inside, so this is a kind of workshop in the same time. Do you have mobile phones or some device? Yes, with internet, please, you will need it. I'll tell you. So a few words about me. I am famous enough, so I'll skip this. But uh, I'm just a software engineer for many years, more than 20 entrepreneur. I run the soft uni. The, I started for the tech education in my career from the National Academy for Software Developers. Later, I was the basic figure in the Telerik Software Academy. And finally, at soft uni, which is going to be a global company now, multi-billion company. So uh, in the blockchain, in, the crypt, in, in crypto, I started from Walktrip, which is a uh, booking platform, decentralized, working very, very, very well. Uh, successful ICO, something like 10 million, and now it has a working product, which runs very well. You can see the charts. It's four times at the last week. Uh, I was a technical person behind this academy school of blockchain. I will not tell any more about this. Uh, I left this company and I'm currently an advisor in few other uh, crypto startups. Currently, I'm working at home because I broke my leg during a soccer uh, play and I'm working on this uh, MIT license at Cryptography for Developer pr Practical Book. I highly recommend it because it's for developers. If you open a crypto book, it will explain you some math, some formulas, things like that. And this doesn't skip this, but it's for developers is how to do this, some code and some essentials behind all these algorithms like symmetric shifters, like block modes, like uh, ellipticers, etc. So today I will first start from the blockchain basics. It will be a nano introduction with some examples. Uh, I will focus on the Ethereum because it's more s the most important for uh, developers. And later I will go to wallets, different wallets types like web wallets, like hardware wallets, like other wallets. And uh, the types of wallets from the developer perspective, si simple key stores and HD wallets. You have a practice session. We will use uh, the Robsten testnet uh, and we will install these JAX wallets, which is one of them many tools uh, and you get some crypto, you will send transactions, sign transactions, you will play with mnemonics, with HG wallet, things like that. Later, I will explain in more details the simple key stores model, uh, which is uh, very similar to the way uh, OpenSSL and OpenSSH, how they store the private keys, this P P M A PEM. Uh, files and later I will demonstrate this with JavaScript and finally I will explain the most complex things behind these wallets, the, the, the so-called HD wallets, hierarchical deterministic wallets, which start from the BIP39 standard, uh, which encrypts mnemonic phrase, a set of 12 words, into a key, and this key is later used for HMAC key derivation for deriving multiple blockchain addresses and their associated uh, private keys. Finally, I will demonstrate this again with JavaScript, because JavaScript is something which many people can easily understand. So uh, let's start from the blockchains. Blockchains are distributed system. More precisely, they are decentralized systems where they keep us the so-called distributed ledger inside a peer-to-peer -peer network. For example, the Ethereum network have uh, 30,000 nodes. It's a public network, public blockchain, where everyone can join freely and can uh, contribute to this uh, consensus. The consensus are the rules which uh, 
change the ledger in a way that it's attack resistant. So this peer-to-peer -peer, uh, network holds a ledger of facts and the, hi the full history of the updates. When you change something, a new transaction is put on the ledger and it's spent through all the um, P2P network participants. It's decentralized and it's run by um, some algorithm for consensus, like proof of work, proof of stake, uh, Byzantine, practical Byzantine fault tolerance, and many others. And it's secure and it relies on transactions uh, and on digital signatures, which allow the transactions, for example, payments, for example, token transfers, and others. Behind is the SEGP 256K1 curve from the elliptic curve cryptography. You may know it. Yes, uh, still open SSL prefers uh, RSA as a default algorithm, but elliptic curves are work better in the blockchain because they produce smaller signatures, smaller keys, etc., etc., etc. And the, the ledger is immutable. I will demonstrate this, but the internal uh, structure of this blockchain is a chain of of blocks. It's a linked list from the programmer's perspective where each block is signed and the other is signed and the next is signed and the all transactions are also signed by their sender uh, by some hashes and digital signatures based on the elliptic curves and mostly on the uh, modern uh, crypto algorithms like SHA3, like uh, AES256, etc. etc. So, some demo. A tether scan, this is the block explorer behind the blockchain. This is an app which connects to, to some blockchain node in this peer-to-peer -peer network, and it shows the blocks. Blocks are produced by the mining process. You know about minings. And currently, we have 60, 6,400, uh, or 6.6 6, 6 6 million blocks. Each block holds transactions. And these transactions, for example, transfer some value from this blockchain address to this blockchain address, this amount of value. Uh, you will play a bit later, but this is in general. It's uh, something like a distributed database, but it's not database because, because you don't have SQL queries. It's a, a sequence of, trans of blocks which hold transactions. So these transactions are either unprocessed or, or processed, and once they are processed, you cannot change them more. So. Why we need wallets? We need wallets because we work with private keys. In computer security, we mostly work with passwords and private keys. For example, you log in your, in your email by username and password. But if you protect uh, something like, uh, like funds, for example, your bank account, you probably use multi-factor authentications. For example, user plus password plus some your OTP one-time password generator, some token or some phone or some other way of uh, ensuring your, um, that your keys are not, are not taken from some hacker and your funds are not spent. So the crypto wallets are the software or hardware or combination of this which stores your private key on the blockchain. You are owner of some assets uh, and you identified yourself by a private key. For example, if I use uh, this, this wallet, my, my address on the blockchain is this. This is something like my email uh, on the email systems. This is identifies me. You may have one or several like this. It is something like IBAN in the bank system. Okay, and these wallets enable users to send and uh, receive cryptocurrency tokens and sign transactions. This transaction can hold not only asset transfer but also code execution uh, instructions and things like that. And the the wallets usually communicate through for to the blockchain, either by connecting to some of the nodes from the peer-to-peer -peer network or using some API, or just they uh, behave like a node and they download the entire chain, synchronize the chain, the chain and put transactions uh, in, in their node. So wallets do primary two things. Keep your private key in a secret, in a well-protected manner somewhere on the, in the cloud or on your hard disk or in a hardware device, a crypto wallet. Uh, hardware wallet, and they sign transactions and send them through the blockchain. For example, if I pay you two bitcoins, I will sign a transaction with my digital signature produced by my private key, which is 
pr before the hand uh, protected in, inside the wallet by a password. I will dig more inside because this is the main topic in my talk uh, and we'll explain you. But generally, you have a private key inside the wallet and you have blockchain address which is generated out of these keys. Some kind of hashing is applied and the blockchain address is generated. Uh, by the way, you may have several private keys for the same address, <laughs> which is strange, and, uh, but the chance to, to generate this is very low because uh, the keys are two 256 bits, so the chance to have two echo keys uh, is not big. So signatures and digital signing is protects the transactions from unauthorized access. For example, if I send you two bitcoins, I should sign a transaction which uh, uh, ensures that I'm the owner of these funds on the blockchain, and I also have a correct uh, payment uh, by my made by my private key. So, there are many wallets. There are typically apps. For example, mobile app like uh, this one. This is the Jax wallet. I don't like it, but this is the only popular wallet which uh, supports the ETH uh, test network, uh, where you can take some coins for free and play. It's something like a demo blockchain. Uh, it's called testnet and you will play now. Uh, I will be very happy if you have uh, mobile phones or uh, tablets or other device and we have of course desktop wallets. This one is desktop wallet. It has a web version and Chrome extension. Uh, some, sometimes they are, they are web-based, but you should trust to these websites. For example, cryptocurrency exchange work as uh, web-based wallets. They keep your private key and they even don't tell you what is your private key because they control your phone, just like when you put some money in the bank. The bank fully controls your accounts on your behalf. The same is with the crypto exchanges. They are banks for cryptocurrencies. Hardware wallets uh, like Ledger, Trezor, and many others are USB devices. You plug this in the USB and it's just like a smart card for, from the cryptography and it displays the transactions and says, hey, do you really want to transfer five bitcoins to this address? And you confirm or can cancel. So this is the, the highly, the most, how to say, the most uh, protective way to use crypto because uh, no one can make a transaction without your wallet or without your authorization. And you have some kind of paper wallet. Uh, they can be some just a private key printed on a sheet of paper. And there are a few other types of wallets. For example, password-based wallet where a password derivation function derives your private key and protects your asset by password, but this is not uh, used in the, in the crypto systems. Uh, the interesting thing here is that once you generate, once you create a wallet, you cannot change the password, you cannot change many things inside. Uh, it's, it's, how to say, it's some kind of forever. Uh, so if someone takes your private key, the only way to save your funds is to transfer them in another wallet. There is no way to change your private key once it's gen generated. You can create a new one, but there is no way to change it. There is no change password. Okay, so practice. Do you have mobile phones? How much many of you have or device or some tablet? Okay, please install these apps, Jax, from the App Store or somewhere. From It's safe. It's a cryptocurrency wallet which plays with Bitcoin, with Ethereum, with many others. Uh, okay, uh, from Jax.io, if you have a nor normal web-based device, you can download it, the desktop version, but it, it's pretty easy. I have it on my phone. And once you install this app, uh, you should uh, select this from the wallets on the right side. You should uh, select ETHT, which is the test Ethereum network. Okay, Ethereum is a blockchain network like Bitcoin, public blockchain, and we'll play with these test ethers, test cryptocurrencies, which is something like uh, you, you play on the stock exchange, but not with real money, but with Demo accounts, this is something similar. Separate network which, where the, the funds are free. Once you install it, you create a wallet and you select this Ethereum testnet. Once you have it, you will have something like this. This is the desktop ver variant, but you have a blockchain address and you have see this ETHT, the Ethereum testnet. Uh, this is the network where you operate. For example, in this wallet, I may have some bitcoins, some 
Ether, some Monero, some other funds. Uh, and also, I have this ETH key. And in the wallets, what's inside, this is the transaction has history. It's not in the wallet. It's in the, on the blockchain. But the wallet just downloads it from the nodes, from the peer-to-peer -peer network in this place. This is my transaction history. Uh, the funds that I received and the, the funds that I sent. This is something like the account history on, on your IBAN. OK, so the next step is to go in Slido and enter in the Nakov channel. Do you know Slido? Just enter Nakov and click. Say, OK, I'll show you this also. Uh, so we open Slido.do. And we click here and say Nakov. We enter inside. And the first who pastes here his blockchain address will get some money from me. <laughs> OK? Something like this I will demonstrate you. I copy my blockchain address, and I paste it. Oh, someone was better, uh, faster than me. So I will say send. Wow, one ether. But this is test ether. What happens? This guy crashed? Yeah. Looks like crashed. No, just it just slow. So I spent one ether with this guy. So why it's not instantly? Because this is a decentralized network. This transaction, which I, I took, OK, I will put for the others also. I will send some, uh, I will tell, tell you 0 0.5 ethers sent. And the other one is waiting. OK, confirm. But this doesn't happen immediately. I will put some matters 0.7, for example. Ah, the address is invalid because it has a space after that. It's very slow. I'm not sure why. Uh, and this transaction, see, they are still not mined. This is the transaction ID on Ether scan. See, this is a hash. It is SHA uh, SHA 3256 hash which identifies the transaction, and it's successful. So this guy is happy to have already funds on the blockchain. Uh, OK, and I will send to the others. And later, I will tell you how you can have testing headers without me, because <laughs> you can uh, get from the facet. But the idea is just to learn what is a crypto wallet. Uh, your crypto wallet holds a private key behind. OK, the others, oh, I will be unable to send to, to everyone. I'm sorry. But OK, I will go to the next slide because you are too much and I will uh, spend too much time. But the, the idea is the following. Uh, these are testing money. You cannot change them on the exchange and get dollars or euro. Uh, but you can play with them. You can send transactions. You can do many things. and. Uh, I can check my address. And for example, this last transaction, I can take, take the transaction ID and just show you on the ROPS10 testnet. It's the ROPS10 Etherscan IO. I can put here the transaction hash and see that this sender sent send transactions to these guys. See? These are the three lucky guys who received some ethers from me. Uh, and some of these transactions are mined, some of them one pending. It takes time for the peer-to-peer -peer network to enter into consensus and to have all nodes in the chain on the, on the network to agree that this money are spent correctly. So it takes sometimes usually 15 seconds for the Ethereum network. Now, did you see the, the last transaction was mined? So the next thing you can go do is just to go to this facet and take some money for free. You can have some ethers without me, of course. They are, the facet is uh, something which just gives you some funds. Because you need these funds to send transactions, for example, to execute a smart contract on the chain or to publish a smart contract on the blockchain. OK? Um, so let's talk about the key stores and HD wallets. Behind this JAX wallet, there is uh, uh, some something which is uh, here in settings. Uh, I can show you the, it's, it has a pin, but I can display some private keys, for example. 
which is not uh, advisable to do, but I work with test editors, and if someone steals them, uh, it not be uh, really a problem. So this is the public key behind some of the address, and this is the private key behind. If it's 256 uh, bits uh, integer, uh, okay, so how traditionally in software in development we keep private keys. For example, if someone, someone have set up an SSL for, for his uh, web server, he first generates certificate uh, request, he has a private key behind this certificate request, and this private key is stored in a PEM file. This is something like this. Is it something already known for you? This, this is called a key store. Key store could be in a text format like this, the RSA format, PKCS8, or it might be in a binary form. Uh, so if you go to my Ether wallet, this is a client side wallet. This is a JavaScript uh, application which doesn't have a backend. If you generate here a wallet, I will generate one. It will just uh, generate a random private key in my browser. This private key will never reach the server, or the authors cla claim this. Uh, and I can download this in a, in a file. And if I open this file, I will see that this is a, uh, AES, AES encrypted. Uh, this is the, the crypto shiffer. Uh, it uses a script to derive a key from the passwords, and later it uses the AES uh, symmetric shiffer to AES128 counter mode uh, with these parameters to encrypt, and this is the MAC key. I will explain this in, in better details. But in order to uh, uh, decode this file, to decrypt it, if you have it, take a snapshot, you will need uh, the password my password, which I entered here. So if I continue here, this is the private key behind this. So this private key corresponds to this encrypted message. Uh, it's a matter of cryptography. So OpenSSH and OpenSSL use similar keys encrypted in, uh, as a private key. For example, this is encrypted PEM file, P PEM. And there is another form of PEM files which are not encrypted, which are not recommended, but it depends. For example, your uh, Git GitHub private key for authorization is usually something similar like this. And the other type of wallets are, are the, are the so-called uh, HD wallets. Why HD wallets? Because they start from some uh, mnemonic. Mnemonic is a sequence of words which are come from out from a dictionary, from a fixed dictionary, and these words uh, reconstruct your wallet. They code the entropy, which is used to encode your wallet's uh, secret. By, by the way, the timer is not running. I'm, I don't know how much time I have. Um, so I will demonstrate this in BIP39. And if I generate, for example, 24 words, these words come from a, a dictionary, which can be Spanish or English or other, and they are words which are uh, not likely to be uh, mis misspelled or uh, replaced one by another. They, they are not similar sounding words. Okay? From these words, they construct this seed. From this seed, they uh, construct this key. And later, using some parameters, and this uh, path, derivation path, they built this private key, and I have as much accounts as I want. Yeah, thank you. For example, this is my first private key, this, this is another private key, this is another private key, etc., etc., etc. So the private keys are 256 bits, and the public key is also, it's 357 bits uh, because it's uh, the elliptic curve cryptography behind on a 256 uh, curve called SecP256K1. And this is the blockchain address, which is basically some kind of hash from the public key. Okay, I will talk a, a lot about this later, but let's uh, talk a little bit more about the key, key, key stores. The key stores uh, in your wallet starts from something like, please enter a wallet password. So the wallet password protect the file which keeps your key on the hard disk. Because if someone gets access to your laptop, to be unable to take your funds, okay? 
The next thing is to download this key store, and the key store I already showed you. The private key you should never review. You should, in fact, you should never store this somewhere. Some people just take a snapshot in their mobile phone, so they send this to Google. Usually, uh, others just uh, print this on a sheet of paper. This is not a good idea. There is a better idea. What's inside? Inside is something like this. This is a traditional authenticated symmetric encryption using the AES-128 counter mode encryption uh, with key derivation based on S script with some salt, with some parameters, and with some MAC key for authentication tag. Read more in, the, in some crypto book because it's a little bit complicated, but generally, if you decrypt this with a wrong password, this MAC will not be correct and it will say incorrect passwords, or will decrypt it successfully and will extract the private key inside. Okay, so what's inside? It's the chiffre text, it's the encrypted data after the AES uh, CTR encryption. These are the chiffre settings. This initial ve vector is the, the, because it's a block chiffre, it's, it's the initial block, which is a random sort. Uh, and the S-script parameter uh, key derivation function uh, performs many, many times some hashing uh, with some salting and uh, derives the keys. And finally, this MAC. This MAC just authenticates that the correct message is restored successfully after decrypting these wallets. It's, it, it checks whether the password is valid or not. Uh, you can learn the algorithms inside, uh, inside the source code of some implementation. Wow, they have moved something. Uh, and I'll show similar, something similar here in, the, in JavaScript. You, do you code in JavaScript? How many of you? Okay, it's nice language, but sometimes this asynchronity is not the best thing for beginners, so I prefer Python, but my example is in, in JavaScript. So you install this Ethers library, Ethers.js, uh, which is um, for Ethereum. It works with wallets, with private keys, it works with smart contracts, with many things. And you can create a random wallet like this, and you can encrypt this wallet by some password, and you will get some JSON file. I will demonstrate this inside the, ooh, it's, it's the last window here. Uh, key store new, this is the code, okay. Is it visible? And if I run this, I will see, huh, it's something, it's not wallet.address, but it's new wallet.address. Run, okay, so I generated a random private key and a random address behind. I can write also the private key. Private key, wallet dot private key. Ah. So from this private key, by some kind of hashing and transformation, this address is taken. This address is public. It is something like your IBAN on the blockchain. If someone has this uh, address, he can send money to, to it, like just with this Jack's wallet. If someone has this private key, he can spend this money. It's an authorization to spend this money to send them to someone. Your Jack's wallet has addresses, has private keys, has transaction signing algorithms, and many others. Okay, so what's the next? The next is this encrypt, which produces this chiffre text. Uh, you can see it. This is something very similar to the thing we used uh, to, to this one. Okay. So this is called simple key store. It keeps only one key, and this key is protected by a password. If you try to decrypt it with wrong password, it will fail. And the S-Script algorithm makes password cracking not very easy. It depends on the setting for S-Script, the numbers of iteration, and many other things. But generally, it's not easy to crack these files. If you have this file, you will be, it will be unlikely to decrypt it and spend the money inside. Okay? Uh, another example is just to have a private key, to build a wallet from it, and to check the balance of this wallet. Uh, in this example, I have existing wallet with existing private keys, which have some money here inside, but they are on the Robstein testnet, so it has some balance of 0 0.84 true. Uh, this is, f uh, uh, in fact, this is this account, Mariah's account, Mariah, 
this address, and this is the balance. This is another wallet. This thing is called MetaMask. MetaMask, which is another wallet software. It has many accounts. For example, I can change Mariah's account with some other. I'm not sure where this was, but I can have transactions, pen transactions, and many other things. For example, I have Peter account, which is different. So I have multiple accounts which hold some assets. This is the way uh, I, I had some example. That's why these names. Uh, OK, so wow. This is the web storm and the JavaScript code. So this is what I have. I have some private key and I say, please create a wallet from this private key. Usually we don't have private keys in this form. It's unusual. It's, it's not something which you, we can do every day because someone can take a screenshot with his mobile phone and your money are lost. Uh, okay. So the interesting thing here is this mnemonics and the wallets. HD wallets keep a securely generated random seed. Something, the seed is the basic from where the, the things come from. And it uses hierarchical key derivation, which means that you have one, something like one password, which consists of 12 words. And these passwords may derive many keys, one key, another key, many accounts for many uh, blockchains. For example, in a hardware wallet or in this JAX wallet, I have uh, in the same time this address for, and this private key for Ethereum. So I have for it. ETH key, this is my address, but from the same secrets which stayed inside these wallets, from the same seed, I have this Bitcoin address. And I have also this Ethereum address, which is not on the testnet, this is normal address. Uh, so, and I can have many and many and many accounts. For example, if I switch to this wallet, I can say, please create a new account for me, create account. And it says, Okay, this is, primer, uh, for example, Nakov new at uh, OpenFest. Uh, and when I create, it knows I have already generated five accounts, so this will be the fifth one. I will add five to the key derivation pant, and I will derive with the HMAC algorithm another account. So my account here is uh, this one. Uh, oh, what was the way to open this expand view? Yes, this is the better way to, to view this. And this is the, this is the account. It's interesting why, why this account is not empty. Uh, the reason is because I use the same uh, words from these wallets several times. So it generates the same sequence of account. It's something like a random generated generator with the same seed. So if you have the same seed in the, at the start for the random generator, it will derive the same addresses. So I have used this in the past, maybe a year ago, and I had some funds in this. This is the reason why, why I create a new account and it already has funds. No, it's, this account is not new. <laughs> it's, it was new for this wallet, but it was, I can have several wallets, for example, several hardware devices, like uh, this ones, for example, Nano S, I want just to, to take a screen, screenshot of this device. This is a USB device, something very popular. So I can have multiple devices initializes with the same seed and they will be copies of the same wallet. They will hold the same blockchain addresses, the same private key. How this works? It starts from the root key, which is derived by hashing this one. There is a uh, crypto standard which says how to, you, you hash this. But what's inherent in this word? This word comes from a dictionary of 248, uh, 2048 words. These are the possible words. So you cannot put nakuf as a word because it's not in this dictionary. Okay, so uh, one word holds 11 bits. Do you agree? Of entropy. Entropy means randomness, the quantity, how much randomness is inside. This is called entropy in physics and entropy in cryptography. So if we have 12 words, how many bits of entropy will have? Or what is the chance that someone else has the same words? If you have two words, it's 11 by 11. If you have three words, it's 11 by 11 by 11 multiplied. If you have 12 words, it's 11 
on power of 12, right? So this is how it works. So 24 words means 256 bits of entropy. The last bit is, the last word here is a checksum. This is not uh, normal. It incorporates a checksum because if you uh, enter something wrong, it will say, oh, this is incorrect. So the bit 39 standard says how you come from words to some key, some seed. And from these seeds, the private keys are derived from this BIP, BIP 44. So let's uh, take another example here. If we return back to this, so we start from 24 words, these words, for example. These words are transformed into this root key, which is uh, encoded. This is in hex. This is the seed. Th this is just uh, some kind of HMAC key derivation with some hashes and things like that. And later, each account, each, each private key has an address. If I change here and put here one, it will generate different key. If I change here and put here 60 instead of zero, it will generate Ethereum keys. Because here, uh, the zero is the Bitcoin, but I can choose another coin, for example, Ethereum. And Ethereum is encoded a 44601. So my K derivation path now is different. It's 60, not zero. And my private key here, the base private key for my uh, Ethereum wallet is different. So if we return back into JAX, here is the value of zero. This is zero. This is 60. This is something different, right? This is how different sequence of keys is generated. It's just like a random generated, initialized with different seeds from the start. You know, if you uh, generate pseudo-random numbers, the sequence will be the same if the, seed, the, seed, the starting seed is the same. So this is the, the zero address. This is the first seed. This is the account number. A uh, few, few minutes ago, I created a new account. So if I already had these accounts, for example, the next one, will be this, because I already used the first four, right? So next, 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 this is how it came, comes, and my wallet knows this private key. And from the private key, it generates a public key, and from, from the public key, it generates Ethereum address. This is how wallets work. So uh, hierarchical wallets holds many accounts. And you can always create new account and new account and new account. And in Bitcoin, you usually don't work with accounts. You work this with the unspent transaction outputs, which are basically something like uh, address, which holds some money. And it can be either entirely spent or untouched. So it's something like banknote. You can spend $5, but you cannot cut it into 2.5 uh, uh, two pieces. So, but this is another story. OK? So, the BIP39 explains how exactly this sequence of 24 words is transformed to a seed key. It's generally PBK DF2 uh, HMAC based key derivation function, initialized with the mnemonic phrase as a password with spa space separated with some salt. The salt can also have some password encryption for the seeds. It uh, transform some kind of iterations. This is uh, always a parameter for the key derivation fun functions like the Linux script, the, like B script, like S script, by, like Argon2 and others, in, and it derives 512 ru root seed. This is the seed. Later, you can use B BIP32 standard, which is the hierarchical deterministic wallet standard. This one, BIP32, just a moment. Uh, it, it just says that uh, you should use this derivation path, and from this derivation path, you uh, derive these addresses. This comes from the Bitcoin. And later, it is taken from Bitcoin to into Ethereum and, and into other blockchains. And uh, the more, more later standard is called BIP45. Uh, it's multi-account hierarchy. What is the, the concept of multi-account? First, you can have multi coins. So example, if you have a hardware device, it can have bitcoins, white coins, ethers, uh, walk tokens, and many other assets inside. And you can have accounts. This is something I can change. Account one, and this was changed. Account two. This is something like have multiple wallets inside one hardware wallet to have wallet for myself, for my brother, and for my company, for example. 
So I change this, this number. And this changes the key derivation path, see? So this thing combined with this thing, they produce your first account, second, third, and fourth. These things, if you have this one, which comes from the seed words, uh, combined with this with HMAC. How many of you know HMAC? Hashed message authentication code. This is something like hash. Like how many of you know SHA-256? Normal hashing. Okay, if you have a key and message, and you combine them and hash them, you will obtain a MAC, message authentication co code. So if you combine this to your password and hash it, you will get one key. If you combine, if you put here one and hash it, you will obtain another key. But hashing is not a good idea to generate MAC, MACs because of the key, uh, key length extension attack and many other attacks. You, we use HMAC or other algorithm. So these keys here are derived by different keys, see? So if I have the seed words and this address, I will take the, the, this different addresses and different keys. So at my Ether wallet, you can change this. I will show you when I generate a wallet. I have only one slide more. OK. I understand continue. Mamkati. <laughs> it needs some Bulgarian pressure. It doesn't work. I will try again. Ah, because I didn't download the key. I sh should first download it, and later I can continue. OK, this is my private key. But uh, if, I, if I check, for example, the, the addresses, uh, if I view the addresses with some, for example, key store, I will open this. It will need password because it will decrypt the AES shifter. Wow, it's not this. Okay, it, I don't have enough, uh, enough time, but it will show you at some, at some point if you have the private key, for example, this one. This is another way to unlock your wallet. Uh, you, you can change the, the, the network. For example, if I change this network to Ethereum common way, well, for example, the address will be changed. Why? Because this, this address is changed here. OK. Some, some code. If I have the mnemonic, I can uh, derive this wallet seed private key. And I can derive by different paths. This is the path, and this is the path for the private key that I, I derived. So if I, this is the code, I have a, some, some mnemonic. I decrypt the mnemonic, and uh, I don't decrypt, I just generate the seed. And I uh, take Ethereum addresses. This 60 is the code of Ethereum. Zero is for Bitcoin. Uh, if you create your own cryptocurrency, you may put here, for example, 5,000. And this is how, how it works. The generated addresses are this. So if I put these words here, see, at uh, BIP39, where is this? If I put this, this key, uh, the addresses here will be, but just used here, zero. The addresses is 27. OK, these are, uh, this is the example. I have preloaded this. This is the, the words. And these are the generated addresses. See? This 5.1, E5, 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 H5, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This demonstrates that the algorithm that I implemented here is the same following this BIP39, BIP44 standards. And this is my last swipe. So I'm open for questions now and also later in the outside of I the I believe we have time for, for one question. Uh, OK, so microphone one. OK. Uh, during the lecture, you created a new test wallet. Yes. 
and uh, it had uh, um, an amount of money there because you used the same uh, seed phrase as before. Uh, no, I didn't create new wallet. I created new address uh, in new my account. New, yeah, new, new account, account in my existing wallet. But yeah. behind this wallet, there are some seed words which I use constantly because I don't want to, to lose my money because yeah. I have uh, accumulated during the time some matters and I play with them. So if you put this the exactly the same money in all your wallets by import wallet, all of you will have the same money. So if someone takes some coins, the other Jax wallet in, in, in the other mobile phone will also have money. And these are the same money. Yeah, well, what my question is, is there a chance I create uh, an account in the real network yeah. and, and accidentally uh, I yeah. have the same seat as someone else, yeah. else have used the, in the past? Uh, this is how it works. It generates 256 bits long random address. So by chance, you have a chance 1 divided to 2 raised to the power of 256. And this is your chance to have a collision by the private key. So if you have a good, good luck, you will have someone else, for example, Satoshi's billion dollar account uh, on the Bitcoin network. But the chance is even better because uh, the Bitcoin addresses are only 160 bits. So your chance to, to take someone else's money is 2 raised to the power of 160. And everyone knows that this is not zero. But so they, they, they believe that it's impossible. The chance for a meteorite to come and to destroy the, the Earth is better than uh, having a random wallet, which is the same like someone else's wallet. Unless your random generator is manipulated. This is what hackers do. They just install some plugin in your browser which replaces your random generator, and the random is not no longer random. <laughs> so if I create a program that uh, generates a count, it, it uh, will how take, much yeah. time will it take? Um, see, if it is worth enough to generate uh, wallets and steal someone else's funds, instead of mining, uh, crypto miners will do this. So. Crypto miners generate something like, depends on the network, but it's something like, uh, like this number of hashes to mine a block. For some no, uh, networks, it could be 2 on 40, but it's far away for, from 2 to the power of 160. So miners still don't mi mine your accounts. And if they are able to mine your accounts, the algorithm will be changed and your accounts will be longer and they will increase the key size and they will save you. But um, see, do you know GitHub? GitHub yes. uses, uses H, uh, SHA1 hashes. So there is a chance that your commit has the same hash that someone else commit and your commit will destroy the commit of someone else. This is how GitHub works. And it was never happened that Two commits had the same number, but this is possible, and they accept it. Okay, let's let's thanks thanks, Lin.